Now, FMG and anatomy questions. So, recently conducted FMG examinations and we will be going through the subject which is anatomy. And what were the questions asked? Now, first of all, I would like you to have a look at these important points. Frey syndrome. This figure from Platinum Q-Bank. This figure from Platinum Q-Bank. This figure from Platinum Q-Bank. This question from Platinum Q-Bank. Now, this question from Platinum Q-Bank. Injury to median nerve from Platinum Q-Bank. Foreign body ingestion, Platinum Q-Bank. The muscle cricothyroid, Platinum Q-Bank. The injury in the spiral groove, or mid shaft of the humerus, platinum Q bank. The foot drop, platinum Q bank. Now, coming to the questions which were asked this year, few days back, and I have shown you my book. So the first question which was asked was Frey syndrome and the nerve injured. Or the nerve which is associated with Frey syndrome. As far as Frey syndrome is concerned, I will be going through a bit of a detail, but you have to remember that the first question was asked Frey syndrome and the nerve involved. It is the auriculotemporal nerve, which you have to remember. Number one. Now, second thing was a question based on identification of the bone, and the bone to be identified was navicular. So you are well aware of the calcaneum, cuboid, talus, navicular and the cuneiform bones. And to identify these bones is not a big issue. Then you were asked to identify a very important vein, the varicose, the, uh, varicosity along the course of the saphenous vein. And then you were asked the testing of anterior cruciate ligament and the test associated with it. And it is the drawer test which is important because it falls within the uh, domain of orthopedics as well as anatomy. So you have to remember anterior cruciate ligament and the anterior draw test. Now there was a figure given and in the figure it was the nerve which was injured, median nerve at the level of the wrist. Now another question was foreign body and foreign body in the pyriform fossa. A fish bone in the pyriform fossa and which nerve would be irritated and it would be the internal laryngeal nerve. Now, inability to raise the pitch of your voice. A clinical condition was given. A patient is unable to raise the pitch of his voice and the muscle involved is. It is the cricothyroid muscle which is a very important muscle and we will be going through some of the features. Now, injury to mid shaft humerus, radial nerve as I just mentioned. And foot drop, it was shown, and the common peroneal nerve. You know common peroneal nerve and the injury associated with it. And there was a slide of Pierce patches, and you had to identify which histological slide is associated with Pierce patches. The choices given were stomach, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. And obviously, the answer is ileum. So the questions were very simple. I don't think that it was a much of a uh, issue in answering these questions because these questions were very simple and at me was asked very easy but let's go and have a look at my book Neat PGQR and Platinum QBank which are the two books and the best combination is the combination of Neat PGQR and Platinum QBank so this is how the Neat PGQR book looks like and this is how we have the two volumes of Platinum 1 and Platinum 2 so these books, number one, Platinum QBank, Volume 1 and Volume 2. In the Volume 1, we have Anatomy, Physiology, Biochemistry and the Preclinical Subjects. And in the Volume 2, we have the Paraclinical Subjects. So just have a look at the questions which were asked. So we will be going and minimizing how the questions were asked. Now, first of all, 
French syndrome and there is this term which is called as gustate resweating after a surgery on the parotid gland sometimes we have got this important phenomena which is due to the involvement of the auriculotemporal nerve there is regeneration of the fibers of the auriculotemporal nerve and after which a person once he or she just do, tends to do any activity there is gustate resweating along the course of the auriculotemporal nerve so that is very important Frey syndrome happens to be a examiner's favorite and it was asked and again I had emphasized it in my book and Frey syndrome was a cure question which I had put up at a top priority and so this has been asked and you have to remember Frey syndrome because it's a repeater these are repeated questions as well because they can be asked then the question was not asked as the diagram over here it was shown a question was asked about the injury to the upper trunk of the brachial plexus which is the herbs point along the which nerve roots were injured and see have a look over here so this c5 and c6 are the roots of the upper trunk of the brachial plexus and this is a copyright protected diagram which has been uh, from our own uh, source and so this is important I had mentioned it with the arrow this is the first question which was placed in platinum cure bank and I mean to say image based uh, platinum cure bank which is the volume 3 so over here this has been asked and you have to remember this thing so point, clinical question asked herbs palsy and it involves which trunks of the brachial plexus so the answer is c5 and c6 over here then i told you another question was a image based question which was asked the pierce patches were shown and which part which part so pierce patches which part of the gastrointestinal tract do we have in microscopy visible pierce patches a slide was given and stomach duodenum duodenum ileum and you know ileum is uh, having this uh, i mean to say aggregations macro aggregations of lymphocytes and this is how the uh, ps patches these are the lymphocytes within the ps patches and this is how they look so this you have to remember histology and there are certain characteristic features like we have the hassel's corpuscle in the thymus we have the corpora arenicia in the pineal gland the corpora amylacea within the prostate so these are characteristic features of certain slides crypts in case of tonsils and red pulp white pulp in case of spleen you have to remember these entities very very important now so the answer there was ileum so pierce patches and ileum so pierce patches are associated with ileum very important auriculotemporal nerve now here i have given uh, a bit of a description about the Frey syndrome that means after parotid surgery parotidectomy uh, which is usually done in case of surgery uh, in case of uh, tumors of pleomorphic adenoma warthin's tumor mixed parotid tumors and there is damage to the autonomic fibers supplying the parotid gland and the overlying sweat glands so that is important that's what we call as gustatory swelling and it was asked now again i go back to the question number one herbs point it was asked which part which trunk of brachial plexus and the nerve roots involved c5 c6 so simple question but you have to remember i have given it in a bit of a uh, explanation and simultaneously for future examinations you should also remember clumkey's palsy very very important question these are high yield questions and tend to be repeated now anterior draw test there are two draw tests anterior draw test and posterior draw test the anterior draw test is for anterior cruciate ligament and posterior draw test is for posterior but there's another test which is the latchman's test and it is also done it is more sensitive for cruciate ligament injuries so you will have these injuries especially in case of football players in case of rugby players who are doing rough uh, sports and we get these uh, uh, injuries in action to the unhappy knee trad which we will be dealing separately with a separate question so anterior draw test anterior cruciate ligament remember this thing so now there was a question which was given uh, along uh, the wrist there's a injury and the injury there is loss of there is loss of pronation loss of a portion of thumb and flexion of the lateral two-thirds of the inter two interphalangeal joints 
and you have to identify which nerve injury it is. It is median nerve because at the level of media wrist, you know, median nerve compression can cause carpal tunnel syndrome. But in action, you have to remember that there can be loss of opposition of the thumb and loss of flexion of the lateral to interfere in the joints. That is very, very important. This clinical scenario was given and it was asked and I had already placed it in my book. So that's important. In action, you can remember a bit of a classic game, ape thumb deformity, which can occur with lesions of the median nerve. So we have got the paralysis of the thinner muscles and the lumbricals one and two, which occur in case of median nerve injury, loss of opposition of the thumb, a very important higher function uh, characteristic of higher mammals. That's important. Ape thumb deformity as well. You can remember these things and sensory loss of the thumb and adjacent three and a half fingers and uh, radial three and a half, two thirds of the palm. That's very important. So ape thumb deformity, carpal tunnel syndrome and loss of opposition of the thumb. That's classic of median nerve injury. Now there was this uh, question from uh, head and neck, say ENT, and a patient had lodged a foreign body, preferably in the pyriform fossa. And you have to remember that pyriform fossa is one of the important, or pyriform sinus is one of the important areas wherein the foreign bodies get lodged, and it is the uh, uh, characteristic uh, feature of certain uh, children who can just large uh, fish bone especially or a uh, bone while achieving extensively it goes to the throat and it lodges within the pyriform fossa so that is very important and you have to remember this clinical entity then uh, a clinical scenario was given loss of pitch occurs due to which muscle and you are well aware of this important muscle cricothyroid and cricothyroid muscle just can cause paralysis of the laryngeal muscles and the patient lose the ability to lengthen the vocal cord and the loss of tension of the vocal cords. So very important, fatigued voice. So a person cannot raise the pitch of his voice. His voice feels like as if he is a fatigued person. So that is very important. Cricothyroid muscle is a tensor of the vocal cord is the main component of, uh, of the uh, muscular element which can cause uh, important uh, increase in the pitch of the sound. So paralysis of cricothyroid can cause a fatigued voice or a person cannot increase the pitch of his voice. So that is important. Then I just mentioned there are three nerves in relation to humerus, upper end, mid shaft and lower end, upper end, classically the axillary nerve, the mid shaft, which uh, is the spiral groove in which lies the radial nerve or the spiral groove or the radial groove characteristically naturally radial nerve will be lying in the uh, radial groove and along the lower end of the humerus we have got uh, behind the medial epicondyle the ulnar nerve and there was a uh, question in dermatology also asked two nerves which can be hypertrophied in leprosy one is this ulnar nerve which can be felt as a cord behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus and another nerve is the greater auricular nerve this was a question asked in dermatology uh, an anatomical question asked in dermatology so greater auricular nerve and ulnar nerve uh, can be felt as cords. This is by the way, the question is not uh, relevant over here, but just for information purposes. So mid shaft fracture of humerus can cause damage to the radial nerve because in the mid shaft there is an anatomical location, the spiral groove or the radial groove and naturally the radial nerve will get injured. So that is very, very important. Now, common peroneal nerve foot drop, I have been always emphasizing two things, the wrist drop and the foot drop. Wrist drop is due to paralysis or, or due to injury of the radial nerve and the foot drop is due to paralysis or injury of the common peroneal nerve. Common peroneal nerve is a branch of sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve at a higher level can get injured. It can also lead to foot drop. But this important thing, the common peroneal nerve which winds around the neck of fibula can get injured and this can cause foot drop. So the question simply was injury to the common peroneal nerve can cause. So foot drop and common peroneal nerve. So as I mentioned, it is a nerve which lies at the neck of fibula is a small terminal branch of the sciatic nerve and uh, it injury to common peroneal nerve causes foot drop. It is very important and one of the commonest nerves in the lower limb to get injured. So, by the way, these were some of the simple questions which were asked and uh, important thing is that uh, these questions tend to be simple but sometimes you can get complicated questions as well and 
uh, from this you can get an idea what types of questions were asked and what are the various important books which are you should not miss standard textbooks i would emphasize that the best way to prepare is the standard textbooks i mean to say that uh, there are books like uh, in other subjects harrison's robbins Anderson's. So, um, in anatomy, you can take a reference from Gray's and other books which I would like to mention over here. But the best combination I would suggest for your revision and quick review is the NEAT PGQR and Platinum QBank. So, I wish you best of luck and thanks a lot.